Good morning and welcome to the video for Thursday, May the 7th. This is going to be our lesson video for sixth grade. Uh, and we are going to be working on the beginning of our new chapter, working on patterns in data. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at our unlock the problem. So uh, we have a series of data points uh, that represent the number of fish that were caught and what the um, size of those fish were. Um, assuming that we are kind of rounding to the nearest inch. So um, the first thing we want to look at is do we have any gaps? Well, we have a huge gap from 8 to 10. And so what they want us to do is go ahead and circle uh, the spaces that don't have any data. So we could circle 8, 9, and 10. Or you could just make one giant circle. Um, so we would put yes for that. And that would be from 8 to 10 inches. And then they also want us to go ahead and put a box around groups of data. So I think I'll use green for that. So here's one of our groups. And then here is the other. Um, so continuing along this kind of line, um, there is a cluster from 5 to 7. And there is a cluster from 11 to 14. And continuing with this idea of the gaps, that means there were no fishes that were between 8 and 10 inches long. There were two clusters of fish measuring from 5 to 7 and 11 to 14 inches long. And so they, they want us to summarize. So all of the things that we just talked about could be included in a summary. So we want to talk about grouping um, or clusters. We want to talk about gaps. We want to just mention general things. So they caught this many fish, or they caught fish that were these many inches long. So 5, 6, 7, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So there are a lot of different ways that you could do that. I'm pretty sure that we could probably find more things to say than what we could actually fit on two lines. Um, and so let's look at number two. So what conclusion can we draw about why the data might have this pattern? So why do we have groups that are five to seven inches and groups uh, that are 11 to 14, but we have this gap where we don't have anything that is eight through 10 inches. So think about that for just a second. Pause the video if you need to. So um, assuming that you pause the video, uh, I'll go ahead and continue. So one of the reasons could be just the type of fish. So they give a, a variety of different types of fish. I know bluegill tend to be a little bit smaller. Bass and trout uh, tend to be a little bit larger. Um, so it could be that we only had two kinds of fish that were actually caught. Um, so that would be one possible explanation uh, for that. So moving on, uh, looking at a histogram, so we are kind of looking at data and we're going to be looking at the overall progression from one side to another. Uh, we're going to be asking whether it's going to be a symmetrical shape, which it looks like it's pretty close to that. Or if it's not, um, we're going to be looking again for gaps. Uh, we're going to have a peak. So the peak is going to be whatever the highest point um, or sometimes points. Um, and so this would be our mode. So our mode uh, potentially would be uh, the most frequently um, occurred result. Uh, so this one for 21 through 30 uh, would be our peak for the histogram. Uh, describe how it changes. So we go from zero all the way up to 50, uh, sorry, Oh, I see what they wanted, want us to do. So we go, we increase from uh, zero to uh, 30 pounds. And then we are decreasing. The value of this is going down as the weight goes up. Uh, so we can put decreases. And I'm just going to uh, leave that there just for time. <clears throat> Number three, de describe symmetry. So if I drew a vertical line through the interval for 21 to 30 pounds, 
the left and right side would be close to mirror images. So if I scroll up just a little bit here, um, if we drew a line through here. So our left hand side and our right hand side are pretty close to mirror. Um, there's a little bit more variance between uh, the light green uh, compared to the dark green, but it's close enough that we could say that that could be um, having symmetry. So the histogram has symmetry. The data points increase to one peak interval, and then they want you to relate what the peak interval again was, and that went up to 30, I believe. And actually, we already have it there. So it would be 21 to 30. And then uh, the data set um, has symmetry about the peak. So I'm going to check on something real quick. All right, let's take a look at the share and show problems. Um, so our dot plot, um, we are going to uh, see if there are any gaps. We do have one uh, that would be between five and six. And that is going to relate to the number of paintings. Identify clusters. This would be our cluster, uh, so one to four. Uh, to summarize the data, all we need to do is just say that there were students that painted one, two, three, four, and seven paintings. And then you can talk about um, that no students painted five or six. And then any other additional information that you would like to include. Uh, number four, what kind of pattern do you see? If we were to draw a line through the middle here, you can see that our left-hand side and our right-hand side are mostly symmetrical. Um, so with that, we could talk about that. Uh, we could say that we have um, peaks on the left and the right hand side, and then we kind of uh, go down to a gap in the middle. Uh, let's see, let's do this one. So uh, number um, 5A, is there a gap from 4 to 5? Yes, because we have nothing there. Uh, there is a peak at zero, so zero is our high point, so that will also work. The dot plot has symmetry, so for it to have symmetry, we would have to go down to here and then move our way back up, and that does not happen. There are two modes, so our mode is going to be um, a our most frequently um, given result. Uh, there is only one of those, so the answer would be no. And there is technically one cluster, because this one uh, guy by itself is not going to count for uh, being a cluster for the purposes of what we're talking about here. So uh, really quick to look at the homework. Um, we are going to use this and identify clusters for number two. So technically, you could probably count this as a cluster um, <clears throat> for the purposes of what we're working with for that, since there are more than one uh, if we combine those together. Um, if your classroom teacher argues that that doesn't count because we don't have enough results for each, then go with that. I would say that that one would count uh, for that. Uh, let's see, number three, how many peaks? So we were looking at the top point. Uh, number four, we're looking at how our values change as we go from left to right across there. Uh, number five, do we have symmetry here? That should be relatively easy to find the answer for. Number six, um, so Risen Christ students, you're doing evens, uh, including this one. For the Google form, if you're turning in that way, I'm only going to ask you uh, to describe the pattern. So you will need to draw the picture uh, to be able to describe that, um, but since you're just putting it in a um, word form, uh, I'll just ask for that part. 
Uh, number one on the back, uh, our interval that has the greatest uh, frequency uh, would be where our peak is for the histogram. Uh, and then we want to, we can actually answer this one um, by just looking at the numbers and comparing it. So uh, if we said that we were missing certain numbers in here, um, it looks like we would go from five to eight for that would be an example of that. But if we are going starting from zero, we could also say that we have another gap in there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so the spiral review, you're going to have to think about volume, find the total volume, uh, liquid volume of this shape. Uh, and then if we're saying that we filled the tank halfway with water, then you would cut that in half uh, to find out how much water is in there. And then it looks like everything else should be pretty self-explanatory. So again, for this one, our median is going to be uh, the center point. Uh, so that should be relatively easy to find. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Google Classroom uh, or ask your classroom teacher if you are finding our video in a different way. So hope you have a great day. The homework video for this will come out on Friday morning, as will the new lesson. And then the homework for that lesson on Friday will come out Friday evening at 6 p.m. So hope you have a great day and I will see you.